Hello and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this video I will give you an overview of heat maps, which are a great visualization tool for differential gene expression analysis. We will cover the basics and also how to interpret a heat map in four easy steps with a real life example. So let's dive in. So before we explain what a heat map is, let's start with some sample data. Now this is gene expression data, so every row is a different gene and every column is a different sample. Now how can we visualize the expression of so many genes across so many samples? You probably guessed it already with the heat map. So heat maps allow us to visualize patterns in gene expression data. Okay, so let's give a more specific example. We are studying gene expression differences between lung cancer tissue and healthy tissue. So after our RNA-seq pipeline, we are left with something like this. To simplify things, we have the expression of 12 genes and 8 samples. The 4 green samples are from healthy tissue and the 4 purple samples from cancer tissue and every row is a different gene. The numbers show gene expression data, in particular the log2 fold change. Now imagine we just color coded each tile. So tiles with a positive fold change would be more red. The more negative the fold change, the more blue the tile would be. And if a gene does not change much between conditions, so its differential expression is close to zero, we would just give it a white color. Nice! So now we make the numbers disappear and we have our heat map. Easy, right? So basically instead of numbers, we use colors. And the color and intensity of the tiles or rectangles is used to represent changes of gene expression. This way we can easily visualize which genes are mostly upregulated or down-regulated across samples. But how can we see patterns with so many colored tiles? The answer is to cluster the tiles. This involves a meaningful reordering of the rows and columns. And this is how we get a clustered heat map. A clustered heat map looks something like this. The dendrograms on the sides just indicate the results of clustering both genes and samples. Clustered heat maps are just heat maps that are combined with clustering methods. This just means we group the samples and or the genes together based on the similarity of their gene expression pattern. In this clustered heat map, we see all samples were clustered together in two big groups. The genes were also clustered together in two big groups, but we can go further down the branches and identify three gene sets, for example. Okay, but what about the patterns we were talking about before earlier? Um, clustering helps us identify samples that are more similar to each other based on their overall gene expression patterns. For example, the second group of samples over here has a general upregulation of this gene set highlighted in pink, but a general downregulation of, of this other gene set highlighted in blue. The blue gene set is, on the other hand, upregulated in the first group of samples. So we can find many more patterns in our heat map. They can involve smaller gene sets or just a few samples. It really depends on our data and what we want to visualize with it. In our example, we expect cancer samples to cluster together and healthy samples to cluster together, but clustering might show us unexpected and interesting groupings. Nice! So for the very last part of our video, let's have a look at a real-life example. I just did a quick search in PubMed for RNA-seq uh, publications and sure enough, the first one that came up had a heat map in its first figure. So this is the heat map and now we're going to go step by step to interpret it. So first of all, we need to check the x-axis. 
In general, every column of the heat map represents a different sample. So that can be cells, it can be patients, and there should be some kind of label to tell you what uh, the x-axis represents. And this will also give us an idea of which samples are more similar to each other. Um, in this case, it looks like each column is a cell and they were also clustered together according to cell type. Next, we need to check the y-axis. In general, here we will find the genes. In cases where heat maps display gene expression data of hundreds of genes, the gene names may not be displayed. But in this case, it looks like they filtered out their data set and they are only showing the expression of certain subsets of genes. So we actually know which genes are shown. Right, so the next step is to check our color scale. Usually the log twofold change for each gene will be shown. And here it doesn't specify it. It does in the actual publication, of course. But in this case, we see that upregulated genes are in red and downregulated genes are in blue. And this will help us identify with a quick glance patterns of upregulated, um, so generally red areas, and downregulated genes, generally blue areas. And finally, we can check if we can identify any interesting patterns. I guess you can clearly see there are six upregulated gene set clusters for each of the six cell types. So if you go to the original publication, you will find out that the genes are actually gene markers that help identify the cell types. So this heat map just shows that the cell type annotations and the gene expression of cell type markers match. Nice, so I hope these general tips help you interpret your own heat maps. So woohoo, you made it till the end, squid-tastic. I hope this video gave you a clear overview of heat maps and how to interpret them. If you liked this video, please let me know and also let me know what other topics you would like to cover next. Have a great day and see you in the next one.